Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm on location here at Sweet Air Reserve. So it's a pretty new uh, location that's recently was acquired in 2013 by the Dill family uh, for the local park di district here. And uh, it's actually the largest one in the uh, kind of area. It's uh, 253 acres of different kind of various mixed uh, woodland, uh, prairie, and different kinds of meadow habitat. And then as you get kind of winding through the different kinds of seven uh, trail loops that there are present here at the reserve, you just start to notice all the different kind of more narrow uh, woodland that you can really just explore and weave through. Also for the area there's also the Sugar Creek that uh, winds right through it and you get to uh, have some, several different kinds of uh, creek crossings which is pretty neat to see. So it's a pretty large park so you could spend many many hours here. Um, it's very like I said popular with uh, different kinds of trail runners uh, just because of different uh, all the different kinds of loops and a uh, handful of miles that you can really get here and all those different kinds of beautiful scenery that's also uh, kind of diverse and varied for the area, all in this one location. So today um, I'm mainly going to be focusing on any of these really, really late blooming uh, flowers that I'm kind of seeing here and there. We've got some uh, co different kinds of Cosmo flowers, um, different kinds of plants like Goldenrod and Teasel that are around. I'm um, also seeing different kinds of um, Black Eyed Susan, Yellow Cone flowers. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Different kinds of prairie grasses and meadow, uh, just common plants. Uh, some see some dried ironweed right here next to me. Uh, but other than that, different kinds of birds, um, since we're kind of nearing towards the end of bird migration uh, for different kinds of migrants and warbler species. Um, I'm not sure if we'll see any of those, but you, you can always hold out. There, um, there's still a handful of them around, different kinds of species um, in this part of Ohio. But um, other than that, yeah, the colors are right now, it's in a weird transition right now. Um, kind of since the beginning of uh, kind of autumn here is that the colors are starting to really kind of change a little bit. Um, certain kinds of trees are more faster to change to the yellow and then orange and then just fall off. Um, some of them even red. But I'm noticing a lot of it's just right now just kind of looking at the tree line, the canopy here. It's just lots, lots of green. And it's a little bit of a bummer um, just because I really, I'm kind of getting impatient just waiting for the peak foliage, which is going to take about another couple weeks up to a month uh, from the, the day I'm making this video. So um, yeah, that's going to be a little bit of a wait um, before I can really experiment with different kinds of uh, creative blurs and abstractions, um, different kinds of beautiful foliage shots. Uh, you could just do so much during this time of year and this different kind of season. Um, but today, uh, we're since we're kind of right in the middle of things and the transition, um, I really don't know what I'm going to do here uh, too much. So we might get some birds in, possibly. Like I said, different kinds of uh, flowers and plants. Um, maybe even different kinds, of, maybe even some long exposures of the uh, Sugar Creek, um, some water long exposures, uh, really. But other than that, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, we're just going to get started here and uh, we'll see what we can find today. Um, anything's up for grabs, so uh, hopefully we get, we get to go home with a few uh, decent photos here and uh, hopefully they turn out well. So, yep, let's get started. All right, as I mentioned before, um, there's different kinds of different flowers that I'm seeing. Um, I got these kind of bright pink ones with the yellow uh, center bud called uh, Cosmo flowers or Cosmos flowers. And it's kind of just unusual just to see them because they're popping up in different kinds of uh, different kinds of uh, sprouts that are just right here in the meadow. Uh, fortunately for me, they're near the edge of them, so I don't have to really zoom in too far um, with a zoom lens. Um, so anyways, I'm shooting in a macro mode here. Um, got just a 25 millimeter extension tube. Got a 75 to 300 uh, millimeter zoom lens, and I'm just picking apart um, in a vertically driven way since um, I feel like that accentuates the subject the best in this case, which is the more vertical uh, composition right here. Is um, I'm just picking apart. I'm focusing on a uh, flower and what would be considered the bottom half of the the frame, or I guess rather the foreground. And I'm just putting I'm putting my focus all the way in the center of the flower, uh, make sure just to ensure it's pin sharp. And then, uh, fortunately, there's actually been different kinds of uh, bugs and a few kind of small little uh, bees that have been landing on these flowers. So that just kind of adds another point of interest and adds, and adds more to the subject, I think. Uh, so anyways, I've been just doing that, uh, using really selective focus. I'm about an aperture of f6.3, which means that uh, it really drops out the focus behind it, um, kind of takes everything out and makes it into a blur behind it. But Fortunately, the subject is still pin sharp uh, right behind it. So I think the results look pretty well, um, all things considered. Uh, it's just really unusual to see um, this time of year in early autumn 
with these just bright pink flowers that are just still out and they still at least look pretty healthy. There's actually one of them that's still um, getting ready to fully bloom. So it's just kind of unusual to see these late um, perennial flowers. But it is what it is. Um, also had to combat the wind here, as you can probably tell. Uh, but it wasn't too big of a deal. Um, you just got to make sure you have a sufficient enough shutter speed to uh, capture it and freeze that frame in motion. So yeah, with that, we're just going to keep on going here along the trail and we'll see what we can find. So I'm not exactly taking a photo here. Uh, I just want to just kind of point out, uh, just showing the transitioning foliage that's uh, laid out in front of me here in the woodland. So as you can tell, it's just got this smooth gradation of how it goes from green to yellow. I'm still hiking around, of course. I still got plenty of ground to cover, uh, a couple of miles of trails. But I'm not just, I'm not really feeling compelled uh, to take an image. And of course, I don't want to force it either. Um, Sometimes it's more important, you know, to uh, actually not take the photo, um, to rather just sit back and observe, and I think that's what I'm going to do here. So, anyways, we're just going to keep along the trail here and see what else we can find. I'm really excited to share this now. Uh, I found this fallen, very, very long tree trunk that's been, looks like it's been stripped of its bark, like over time, just the natural weathering and process of it. And it just has this nice smooth abstractions and swirls and just the different details in uh, the tree trunk or whatever. And, you know, what's situated, what was underneath um, the really rough and coarse kind of um, kind of granulated uh, bark that was on the outer surface. So this is the much smoother surface. Um, and I just really love the abstractual way that it just uh, creates all these different, it's just painterly, I mean, it simply is. It's got different, just smooth swirls in it, different kinds of uh, browns, uh, like, a, like a taupe, kind of like tan color, uh, just different hues. And it just really is, looks amazing. So <laughs> um, I'm using this uh, small telephoto lens here. I'm not shooting in macro this time, but I'm just uh, zoomed at the regular uh, 75 millimeters, and I'm finding it really works out well to extract different parts of my favorite parts, at least, of this um, this abstractual uh, uh, tree trunk. Um, so it's in the but what makes it even better is that it's got all these different leaves that are falling from the trees above it that are still standing, and what I'm using is um, without. I'm not trying to make it so I'm like picking apart different leaves and trying to move them and make them as I see fit, but I'm treating the subject as a found object, uh, meaning I'm just photographing it the way I see it. So if a leaf falls, and I like the placement of it um, combined with the rest of the, uh, the different swirls and kind of abstractual looks to it, then I'll photograph them. And I'm using those leaves as a uh, visual anchor or a focus point, so I'm focusing on that specific leaf but then I'm leaving everything else around it to be this really kind of abstractual swirl. So it kind of creates this uh, very interesting, I think, um, juxtaposition of the, the you know the sharp and focused leaf. But then you got on the outside around it is this very kind of uh, ethereal, um, kind of artsy look to it, which I think really works well with this. And using the small telephoto um, just really helps compress that look and isolate um, the details and make it much more. Um, tighter looking image than it would if I did like a wide angle and showed more of the tree trunk so yeah the whole point of this is making basically an in intimate landscape um, and I feel like I really achieved it with this and then using a polarizer filter um, I can also just knock off any glare um, and just really bring out the shadows and make some make, make a higher contrast um, uh, image with the different swirls in the tree trunk here
So everything's looking great here. Um, I'm using uh, the rule of thirds to kind of off-center the leaves so they're not always in the middle. Um, I'll put them in different kinds of corners of the frame. Um, there's also different kinds of colors of leaves, different sizes, uh, different textures in the leaves themselves. Uh, that's alone from the rest of the uh, tree trunk. But also got this very, very nice, uh, pleasant kind of diffused lighting. Uh, it's just a, basically what It'd be sort of a very bland sky because it's just like a sheet of uh, gray. There's no clouds or no definition. Um, so, in truth be told, it's kind of boring. But that means you can photograph pretty much all day without any really harsh um, different light, light and shadow play. And so it really works out in this case because where I'm at is it's partially shaded on both sides of this uh, the Sugar Creek here. But where I'm at in kind of the middle here. Uh, there's a lot of light that could just be pulled in if it was uh, just a clear blue sky day. So I'm very fortunate that it's uh, just nice soft diffused light here. And yeah, it just really works out well. Um, I just like the different arrangements of the leaves. Um, just and nat naturally speaking, um, just the way they all kind of fell together and the way they just lined up all over this tree trunk. And yeah, it's just, I like doing creative images like this. I like to, you know, I realize my my kind of uh, thesis, I guess, of my portfolio is to kind of infuse the science and uh, the, you know, the ecology and the biology of nature and all that, you know, the wildlife and just the natural, you know, the sciencey part of it. But I love to meld that into the kind of my art background of just, you know, combining that, making it something that's creative, um, aesthetically pleasing or tasteful. And uh, just, yeah, going around and just doing all that, you can learn more about nature. And then you can also learn more about art. And I feel like this image just speaks volumes about um, that in that regard of, I guess, would be my thesis. So I'm keeping the, the settings pretty uh, simple. I'm just using uh, about F11. I'm shooting a pretty slow shutter because there's little to no wind. Uh, it's not moving around the tree trunk anytime soon, obviously, for how heavy it is. And the leaves aren't moving. So I'm at a fifth of a second. And then um, to keep the ISO down as well, just to not have any uh, digital noise, um, I'm just shooting at ISO 400. And it makes a nice evenly lit exposure. Um, the histogram looks very, very nice. No clipping um, or any kind of blinkies on the LCD screen. No overexposed details. Just a very, very simple, um, almost minimalist uh, exposure. And the subject is just plainly, plainly laid out. And everything just kind of works together. And yeah, I really like how they turned out. Another important tool I've been trying out recently, uh, recently acquired at least, is this little simple tool. It's called a L bracket. Um, as the name suggests, it's an L-shaped uh, piece of. Usually, it's made out of like aircraft grade uh, uh, metal or steel. And this one, simply, they all mount to the bottom of the uh, or the tripod mount plate would be on your DSLR camera. So, and this one is actually uh, considered a universal one, um, depending on your your camera model, your uh, your camera body. You might have a specific one that you can get, or you can just get one that's compatible with a whole range of different uh, kind of cameras or different kinds of brands. Uh, in this case, this one is a universal one, so it actually has a uh, one of these little mount screws, but it has a slider so you can adjust it. So it's, um, it's more compatible with uh, other different kinds of cameras there. But uh, I really like this one. It's uh, very affordable. This one was only about, uh, about $45 or so. Um, and so far it works wonders and so what the L bracket actually does um, it provides if you want to do loop a carabiner or any kind of clip you can have that and you can attach it maybe to like your uh, your hip belt or any other kind of placement um, I, I personally wouldn't do that but um, you can also use it as a secondary kind of, a, kind of like a hand grip almost like if you're shooting a video you could just have it like this simply and uh, the biggest thing that I think people use L brackets for um, and it's what I use it for the most is to actually mount it on your tripod and what this does is if you use a ball head like I do for uh, the majority of my photography uh, when I'm using a tripod at least uh, is that you don't have to adjust the actual the ball head um, anymore so you just simply uh, loosen the screws there and just adjust it and it can go any different kind of vertical or horizontal orientation and you don't have to mess with the ball head at all and it just really helps it's a very helpful tool that um, I recommend you get especially if you do um, not so much wildlife photography but if you do a lot of uh, different kinds of landscapes um, this is a very amazing tool to have and it's one that I'm finally glad I got and it's been working out pretty well 
uh, specifically for these photos and other different kinds of landscapes and other images that I take. All right, this is a nice simple uh, subject here, nice simple photo, but uh, I'm just shooting handheld here. I'm still using my small telephoto lens. I'm kind of staying between the 75 millimeter to 100 millimeter range. I'm just working back and forth with that. Uh, I'm using a polarizer just to saturate the colors of the greens and the yellows of this Ohio goldenrod here. Um, this little patch of uh, blooms right here. And then uh, I'm just using, like I said, shooting handheld. I got 160th of a second and then ISO 400 and uh, f7.1 and I just find it works out pretty well. Um, it makes a nice simple but effective uh, image. I focus on one of these foreground ones like this one for example and then I really with that really shallow depth of field of 7.1 uh, just drops out the rest of the background out of focus and it creates a nice uh, pleasing kind of green blur um, background. But uh, this is a nice simple photo. I could definitely see this being in like a some sort of field guide or some kind of um, different kind of like floral plant brochure. Um, it's definitely a more more on the uh, sciencey, I guess, uh, side of things. It's not so much an art, art artful photo, but definitely gets the job done. And I feel like the results turn out pretty well. So one of my favorite spots actually in Sweet Air Reserve here is this kind of tree line situated um, on the other side, on the edge of this prairie over here. And this is a perfect spot. Um, this time of year I always find tons of different warblers. Uh, you'll see lots of eastern bluebirds that are floating back and forth from the, uh, the nest boxes that are situated along the edge of the prairie here. And then the trail, I mean it's just right here so you get all these up close views of wood warblers. Um, I've seen cedar wax wings high up in the treetops here, um, but fortunately a lot of other um, just kind of specialty birds and common uh, songbirds like uh, tufted titmouse, uh, cardinals, uh, you'll see a lot of Carolina chickadees here. Um, this whole spot is just perfect for different kinds of uh, bird habitat. I would say in terms of birding, Sweet Herb Reserve is uh, kind of a bit of a hidden gem in my part of this area of Ohio, but I find this particular spot in the reserve um, it's probably my favorite, one of my favorite spots to photograph uh, smaller birds because they're just right up close to you and they get down eye level and it just really works out that way and makes some great photographs. Alright, so I think we're about done here um, with our trip here to the reserve. Um, we're going to finish up and make our way back to the parking lot. All right, everyone, that pretty much is going to conclude today's video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I covered a lot of different uh, different kinds of subject matter. Uh, got different kinds of uh, long exposure of some landscapes of the Sugar Creek. Uh, got some intimate landscapes of so different abstracts of the leaves. Also got different kinds of warblers and migrants and uh, different kinds of songbirds of that sort. And some other stuff. So, yeah, you all see it all at the end of the video here. But um, thank you so much for watching, guys. This has been Sweet Air Reserve. And thank you for exploring with me. And until next time guys, make sure to get out here. Thank you.